In 1979, Iran was gripped by the Islamic Revolution, leading to the U.S. Embassy siege. The attempts to rescue the hostages, Operation Eagle Claw on April 24th to 25th, 1980, was a cinematic plot. From the Persian Gulf's Nimitz carrier, eight RH-53D helicopters set off towards Tehran, while six C-130 planes aimed to meet them. The plan? To spirit the hostages to safety from a stadium. But nature intervened with vicious sandstorms. Of the eight helicopters, only six reached the rendezvous. Then one went down after landing. The mission was further marred when a helicopter collided with an EC-130, resulting in the loss of eight lives. Leaving equipment behind, the remaining forces retreated. The debacle of Operation Eagle Claw became a significant blow to President Carter's administration by the end of 1980. The Iranian misadventure was a wake-up call. It led military masterminds to introspect. It wasn't that their helicopters were inadequate. Rather, the CH-53 just couldn't emulate a plane's prowess. On the other hand, the C-130, though adept, couldn't mimic a helicopter's nimbleness. A hybrid was needed, one with the finesse of both. Enter 1981. The curtain raised on the JVX program, aimed at crafting a transport to match these newfound aspirations. Initiated by the US Army, the Marines, Navy and Air Force were quick to jump on this enticing bandwagon. Giants like Grumman, Lockheed and Boeing threw their hats in the ring, with international stalwarts Aerospatial and Westland adding to the mix. Given Bell's rich heritage in this sphere, their triumph in the tender, especially with Boeing's alliance, was almost prophetic. By 1983, they clinched the deal. Drawing inspiration from the XV-15, the development of this new bird was swift. By 1985, it had a name, V-22 Osprey, reminiscent of formidable birds of prey. Its grand debut in 1988 was a spectacle. While the Osprey showcased promise, challenges loomed. Its production cost was astronomical, causing the US Army, initially its prime patron, to backpedal, reallocating funds to helicopter upgrades. This pivot slashed orders, ironically hiking the Osprey's price even further. While Washington was a buzz, the Pentagon eyed it warily, but Congress championed its cause. The V-22 Osprey, a majestic converter plane, boasts attributes of both plane and helicopter. Its blueprint harks back to its ancestors, the XV-3 and XV-15. It sports a fuselage akin to a sleek military aircraft, augmented by a raised tail, ramp, and twin tail. Its belly shelters vast fairings, cradling equipment, some fuel sanctuaries, and the main landing gear's niches. It stands proudly on a robust tricycle gear, with a front leg that swivels. Both front and rear wheels are twins, two wheelers that look like they're ready to sprint any moment. The V-22 stretches its wings high in the sky, like an eagle ready to soar. These wings aren't just any wings, they come with grand flaperons playing dual roles as ailerons and flaps. The wings' tips conceal the powerhouses, engines and propellers that defy gravity and logic. When it comes to materials, the engineers watch the fine line between innovation and tradition. The result? A structure where 43% is made of futuristic composites, ensuring the tilt rotor maintains a dry weight of 14.4 tons. The V-22 is deceptive in size. It's just a smidge longer than the Black Hawk. Yet its wingspan, especially when you count in the rotors, stretches to a vast 25.8 meters. One might think such a machine would be enormous, but the V-22 is meticulously designed, especially considering its primary role on board ships with space constraints. This bird has a trick of its sleeve. It can fold not only its propellers, but also its wings. Imagine watching these wings elegantly rotate and snug against its fuselage reducing its span to a mere 5.6 meters in a swift 1.5 minutes. Inside, the V-22 boasts a cockpit resembling something out of a sci-fi movie, fly-by-wire controls, a computerized co-pilot, and a mesmerizing display of five multifunction screens, one of which can show feeds from external devices. It comfortably houses three to four crew members, and its belly can swallow up to 32 people, light military vehicles, or even 5.7 tons of cargo hanging externally. But what about weaponry? Well, the V-22, given its versatility, can stand alone in missions, making it a rather unique transport machine.
basic defences include M240 or M2 machine guns. There are more audacious weapon ideas in the mix, like heavy machine guns or an array of missiles. But remember, the V-22 isn't trying to be a battle tank in the sky. Its charm lies in its blend of speed, range and adaptability. Speaking of its power plant, two potent turboshaft engines, paired with intricate gearboxes and rotors, are nestled within single pods, positioned like jewels on the wingtips. These pods have an impressive range of motion, swivelling from a flat horizon to an almost straight-up tilt and a tad backward. Such flexibility allows for a myriad of takeoffs, from the fierce 80 jump at a sharp 80 degree angle to a more restrained 45 degree angle with increased weight. These rotations are swift, with a 90 degree tilt accomplished in a mere 12 seconds. Engineered with safety in mind, a synchronizing mechanism ensures that even if one engine falters, the other steps in, ensuring the Osprey remains airborne, a technique borrowed from multi-rotor helicopters. The V-22's rotors are undeniably eye-catching. With three sturdy blades and mechanisms tucked neatly beneath aerodynamic fairings, they exude grace and power. Yet, these rotors had to make concessions for multifunctionality and compact storage on ships. While their 11.6 meter diameter might seem extensive, it's actually on the petite side for helicopter standards. Now, for the engine magic. Encased in the nacelles are the Rolls-Royce T406 engines, descendants of the American Allison engine lineage. Although it may sound foreign, these engines are American at heart, a testament to their evolution under Rolls-Royce's stewardship after the 90s acquisition. These engines are not just robust, they're Herculean, boasting up to 6,150 horsepower, surpassing even the mighty Super Stallion's engines. Why the need for such power? The V-22's engineering is a blend of elegance and complexity, demanding extra juice. Coupled with the rotor's limited lifting capacity, more horsepower became essential. And who can argue against added power, especially when the newer CH-53K King Stallion roars with a monstrous 7,500 horsepower? It seems everyone in the aviation world has caught the muscle car fever. The crescendo of power doesn't end there. Rolls-Royce aims to crank it up to a staggering 10,000 horsepower, hinting at the V-22's potential to break sound barriers. But this power isn't without challenges. The V-22s might produce wind gusts that could rival a hurricane during takeoffs and landings. Lastly, the V-22 isn't just a consumer, it's a giver. While aerial refueling is standard, the Osprey's capacity to act as a refueling tanker is what sets it apart. With the inclusion of F-35B fighters on amphibious assault ships, the V-22's refueling prowess might just be the game-changer, as demonstrated in tests with the F-A-18. In March 1989, the V-22 Osprey leaped into the skies for the very first time. Six prototypes would grace the 1990s, enduring extensive trials and tweaking by a dedicated entourage of technicians, pilots and military personnel. As these majestic machines took to the seas, they elegantly danced across assault ships and colossal aircraft carriers. Yet, a hiccup emerged. Their engines exhaled scorching breaths, scalding the very decks they landed upon. While this necessitated a rethink for shipbuilders, it was hardly a novel challenge, especially with F-35Bs sharing the same decks, their jet engines likely producing a similar fiery heat. Training for the V-22 was a unique blend. Potential pilots had to be versed in both chopper and plane piloting. And while debates raged on which foundational experience was superior, all agreed that in level flight, the V-22 felt much like the familiar C-130. Its flight dynamics were straightforward, ascend like a helicopter and cruise like an airplane, utilizing the wing for lift and engines for thrust. Such hybrid capabilities offered something revolutionary. Speed limits that tethered helicopters became obsolete. The Osprey could fly at breakneck speeds of 266 knots, even touching 305 knots, and soared to altitudes akin to turboprops. Its expansive ferry range of 2,230 nautical miles set it leagues apart from traditional helicopters. If the Ospreys had been present during the Eagle Claw mission, many challenges might have been sidestepped, although uncertainties in the mission's success would still loom. Yet, for all its splendour, the V-22 bore its burdens. Maintenance was a task, and piloting demanded finesse. In emergencies, it couldn't decide whether to be a plane or a chopper, presenting challenges in dire situations. 
While the design incorporated redundancies and reinforcement, some lingering challenges remained. The 1990s and early 2000s bore witness to some harrowing incidents. Two prototypes met tragic ends in 1991 and 1992. 2000 was particularly bleak, witnessing two catastrophic crashes that claimed 23 precious lives. These incidents threw the entire Osprey program into a whirlwind of scrutiny, even the staunchest supporters wavering in their commitment. However, with adversity came evolution. Training underwent a rigorous overhaul, demanding pilots achieve an almost symbiotic relationship with the Osprey. Simultaneously, Bell and Boeing dived deep into refining the machine, ensuring no technical glitch would reoccur. Although today it meets military safety standards, its past is riddled with challenges. Many still eye the tilt rotor with skepticism, viewing it as more of an opulent airborne showpiece than a necessity. They'd rather stick to their trusty choppers. Even the president decided to play it safe when picking out a new Sky Chariot. The avant-garde V-22 proposal was nudged aside for the VH-92 Patriot, a more conventional chopper. The hefty price tag on the V-22 might have been a contributing factor. From its inception, the military shelled out a staggering $27 billion on this beast. At one point, it was going for $67 million a pop, without factoring in R&D. That's almost double the cost of the CH-53E. Over time, though more affordable, it still leaves a significant dent in military budgets. In conclusion, why the V-22 Osprey is failing can be summarized in four points. 1. Safety concerns and tragic history. The V-22 program witnessed several devastating accidents during its development, especially in the 1990s and early 2000s. These incidents claimed multiple lives, casting shadows of doubt over the aircraft's safety and reliability. 2. Operational complexity. The hybrid nature of the V-22, acting both as a helicopter and an airplane, posed unique challenges. In emergencies, it presented dilemmas regarding its operational mode, demanding greater pilot finesse and expertise. 3. High costs. The Osprey's development and unit costs were astronomical. Its initial budget ballooned over time, and even with cost-saving measures in later years, it remained a significant expenditure for the military. 4. Perception and trust. Despite its capabilities, many in the military preferred conventional helicopters over the Osprey. Its controversial past, combined with skepticism about its necessity, led some to view it more as a luxury than a critical asset. Even significant decisions, like the choice of the President's aircraft, leaned towards more traditional options. <laughs>